Okay. Finally. Truth equals freedom. You know, it's kind of weird that when I come up with sermons and I and I want to have a picture for my title page, I I uh, type in the uh, browser and truth equals freedom. And this was the only one, but the, someone else must have had that same concept. The Holy Spirit spoke to them and wanted to do a message on truth equals freedom. And if you know about history and how our nation became the greatest nation on the face of the earth, you, you find out that it's because of the truth of the Word of God that our founding fathers based the Constitution and a lot of the um, policies and principles, the Declaration of Independence. I mean, the preamble to the Constitution. Life. What's the rest of it? Liberty. Liberty. And just a for all. The pursuit of happiness. <laughs> right? The thing is that if we understand that we are endowed by our Creator to, to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and to acknowledge that this can only come from the source of life, liberty, and happiness, and that is God. And yet, throughout the years, People have tried to separate God from the way we do life. And it's just like trying to separate, like let's just say a, a, a person, right? Can you separate a person from his soul and his spirit? Can you separate those things? No. You can't do it, right? And the thing is, that's what they're trying to do, is separate what life is all about from God. You can't do that. I mean, they attempt to, but what happens when you try to do it your own way and, and promote the lie, and that's what's happening today, is it doesn't work out that way. You can't do it your own way. And all through the Israel's history, we see that God says, this is the way you do it. And they went this way. And what happens when they went this way? It didn't work. Now, I've been reading through, um, you know, the Pentateuch, the first five Bibles. Uh, I'm in numbers right now. And, and how God said, do it this way. And they did it this way, and they go to Moses, and they complain about blah, 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 don't have anything to drink. Why did you take us out here in the desert to die? We, it would have been better for us in Egypt. Now, they forgot the misery they were in Egypt, the, the, the misery they experienced, and, and they forgot the bricks that they had to make and, and build. And... And they were complaining, and they were crying out to God. They forgot that, right? That God save us. So God delivers them from Egypt, and then now they're in the desert, and they, oh, we don't have anything to eat. So God puts the manna on the ground, right? And they pick up the manna, and God says, don't take more than you need, because it's not going to last in the morning, right? Except for Friday, right? Take enough for two days. And, and you can see that when they try to do it their way, because there was this evil one that was tempting them to say that God is a liar, you shouldn't listen to him. So they listen to Satan, and guess what happens? It doesn't work. Why is it that in life today, that's what we tend to do, right? Just again, I, I've said this many times before, is you know, it's like the song, I did it. My way. And where does get, doing it our way lead us? The wrong way. Because we need to do things God's way. 
And only when we do it God's way, we're following the truth, and the truth sets us free. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we had seen with our eyes. John was a witness when he did see all the works of Christ. And so he, he's not just telling a story, he witnessed that. We, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched. And, and, and many times today we'll try to criticize the Bible and, and, and say what well, the Bible is in tradition, it's a fairy, it's a fairy tale. You know, there's more witnesses of this event happening where Jesus came to the earth and in. Even the secular writings, people that were not of the Hebrew people, but the Jewish nation, that wrote about the history of this man called Jesus. And yet, the, the evil one is, one of his name is Deceiver, by the way. Or the father of lies, right? And, and so his full intent is to get people to not believe the truth and instead believe the lie. We proclaim concerning the word of life. Now, who was the word? Well, he wrote the book of John, and in the first verse of the first chapter in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God okay and then in verse 14 what does it say in verse 14 the word became flesh became human it got incarnate right be made in likeness of man the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. He's calling Jesus the eternal life. He's a life giver. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and declared to you that God is light. And in Him there is no darkness at all if we claim to have fellowship with Him, and yet walk in the darkness, we do what? We lie. And we do not live out the truth. You, you see, that's what's happening today is people are deceiving their own selves. Of course, there's a help from the evil one, but we as people have a choice. God allows us, He has given us a mind, but somehow we have distorted the truth. And like Isaiah says, we have turned evil into good and good into evil. Well, let's have some examples. What are some examples today that are out there polit politically, right? That they're talking about that, oh, it's good to do this. Maybe some things. Gay marriage. Oh, it's okay for a man to marry a man and a woman to marry a woman. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to borrow something that is holy, really, something that is God created, and make it a little twist and say, you know what, marriage. So, so if they don't believe that marriage is something that is from God, then why is it so important for a man and a man to marry, have a, a, a ceremony, and be in relationship with God? Why don't they just live together? You see how Satan works? He puts a little truth with the lie so that it is more palatable. I mean, how many times have we, oh, 
just like Mary Poppins, right? A spoonful of Okay, so you have a little bitterness in that medicine, and you put a little sugar in it, and it doesn't look like it's medicine anymore, right? And that's what they're doing today, is they're trying to make it palatable for us to swallow the lie. I mean, and then just like in fishing too, right? You got something on the end of the line, it's called the fish, the bait, or the lure, right? Now, what is that? What are you trying to tell the fish? Come and get it. Huh? Come and get it. C come and get what? The food. Food. Well. And it appears to the fish, right, that that is something that is pleasing to his eye or her eye. And so if I will just grab onto that and eat it, it's going to be good. But what happens? You can't. You grab onto that. And they don't realize that if you have a bait, you know, there's a hook inside of it. Or that beautiful looking lure. I should have taken a picture of a lure that my brother used to make lures for a deep sea fish. And this, it's got all different colors with a skirt on it and um, shiny abalone shells that he puts in his resin thing. It looks really nice. And the fish, the marlin. They, they go over there and they slap on that thing and then pretty soon they, they bite on that thing and guess what? It's too late. They're caught. Unless they're smart enough to throw that hook. <laughs> <Which happens a lot. laughs> but that's the, the way things are in life today is Satan throws out that line and we are so gullible and we think that the lie is the truth. And so we grab onto that, and we own that, and we live that way. And you know people like that too. What's some other things that we have called evil, good, good evil? Living together when you're not married. What's wrong with that? I mean, why not try it out, right? Because that's... I know even when we were growing up, right? You know, you gotta, you gotta be smart and not just jump into a relationship. You have to experience uh, and, and learn their quirks before you get married because then you learn how to be a couple or if that relationship is no good, but if it doesn't work out, guess what? There's no commitment, right? And, and it's saying that this is the way you should do it but that's not God's way. Because, you know, again, love is not, well, I love you because you are just beautiful. And, and then we, I'm going to do things for you because if I do good things for you, then I'll get something. That yeah, I want. Right. And people get into relationships. And, you know, if, if your relationship is built upon how that person looks, after the years, that person is not going to look the same. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Because we get older, and, and sometimes we get a little... Well, that's a good word. <laughs> well, they say the bigger you are, the more to grab is not, right? <laughs> But the thing is, if your relationship is built upon, uh, built upon appearance, what happens when an appearance is not there anymore? I don't love you anymore. Or if it's based on finances, so uh, maybe a, a woman meets a rich man and he goes to, and, and he buys all that stuff to make her happy, but then he goes bankrupt. That's what happens. If it's built upon, that relationship's built upon his money, and he doesn't have any money, guess what happens? It's just like the prodigal son, right? Goes and says the drinks are in the house, right? You know, I, I'm paying for it all, you know, that type of thing. And, and, and pretty soon he runs out of money, and then where's his friends? They're gone. They're gone. So that's a lot. And there's so many of these things that go on today where people are saying, this is good. When in God's sight, it's not. 
It says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from some of our sin. No? Oh, oh I, I gotta check my eyes. <laughs> it says from all sin. All sin. There's that word all again. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. I don't think I've ever said, I don't have any sin. Have, have you? I don't think we've done that. But, but some people say, well, I don't have any sin. You, you know what? If they don't have any sin, they, they, they say that. They either don't believe that they have sin, or they don't understand what sin is. Because if they understood what sin is, and even Christians today, many Christians don't. When I ask them what is the word sin mean, they think it's doing all the good things and not doing the bad things. But really the word sin is to miss the perfection that God intended us to have when He created us. He wanted us to live pure and holy lives. And so even if we <laughs> didn't do it perfectly. It really just kind of a little. It's it's good, but it's not the best. That's sin. So if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. We lie to ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us some for some of our sins and purify us from some of our unrighteousness. Is that what it says? But isn't that the way we think sometimes? Because the accuser, another name for the enemy, the devil, is, you remember when you did this, and you did this, and you did this? <laughs> how can you think that you are holy? How, how can you believe that you are a saint when you have done all these bad things? You're not holy. You're filthy. And then you know what happens? We tend to believe the enemy. Well, yes, on our own, we are not holy. We are far from that. But guess, guess what? When Jesus died for us, he made us perfect. He made us holy. Through the blood of Jesus, we are covered. So that when our Heavenly Father looks at us, that's what he sees, his perfection. If we claim that we have not sinned, we make him to be a liar, and his word is not in us. Now, if you remember, when Jesus was in the garden, he talked about the spirit of truth. A lot of people, I've been reading this book about the Holy Spirit, and it's really good, because he, he says that a, a lots of time people will call the Holy Spirit an it because the Holy Spirit is part of the, the Trinity that a lot of people don't really truly understand and, and, and sometimes they tend to look over it like when you're reading about the Holy Spirit they, they just kind of skip over it because they don't understand who the Holy Spirit is and the, the part, the important part that He has in our lives. But the, the scriptures talks about that, that we, when we give our lives to the Lord, right, and we're immersed into Him, what happens? We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and He becomes the one that lives within us. And guides us. And, and the thing is, if we don't understand that, that this Holy Spirit is a person that is, he's called the comforter, he, he, he's called the helper, and that he is there to understand what truth is. He is the spirit of truth. And he gives us the spirit to recognize the lie between the truth. And, and I don't know about you, but today I look at what's happening, and when I hear a lie, I say, that's a lie. 